Hello, everybody. I am Michel, uh, BSIS director, as you know. Thank you for connecting today with us for this uh, first uh, BSIS uh, webinar, which is part of our online impact series. Until uh, May the 12th, uh, we'll have two webinars a week on impact and BSIS, and it will be the opportunity for everybody to share experience experiences from 10 business school all over the world experiences on impact and experiences on the bsis of course and you will be able uh, to ask your question during the, all this uh, session today participants uh, are coming from uh, different country canada france uk belgium asia and so on uh, this webinar, slide number two, this webinar has been prepared by uh, the BSIS team and in, you know our BSIS team, uh, Grit, we, who has been the, the great manager for the program, Mayen, Martina and also Lucy. And uh, then uh, this team is working from Geneva, from Prague, from uh, Lot and La Rochelle in, in France. Uh, today, slide three, today our two speakers uh, will be Eric Cornell, president of EFMD Global Network, and uh, Maurice Stevenet, uh, general director for, uh, for FNEJ. And uh, they will tell us uh, their first perception about impact, about uh, uh, the crisis, impact in the crisis in, in these days. And I would like to, to thank you, Maurice and Eric, for being avail available uh, today. Um, as you know, uh, during uh, this period, uh, uh, some people are thinking that we are uh, really available and we don't work a lot. And I think that's really not true. And uh, everybody is working a lot. So my, my first question, my first question to Eric and uh, Maurice will be the, the following. Can you, can you briefly, can you briefly comment uh, the, the current crisis, even if it is not the topic today, we cannot begin uh, this uh, webinar on impact uh, without uh, taking into consideration the situation of business school facing the crisis. And of course, I would like to, to ask you what is the role of impact assessment in this context? Eric, would you like, uh, would you like to begin, please, Eric? Eric, you have to... Yes, I have to unmute. It's done. At your orders, Michel. Thank you very much. And uh, hello to everybody. I mean, sorry not, uh, not to see you uh, uh, face to face in live. I mean, it's very painful to do this kind of exercises without seeing you. But at least, I mean, I will convey my, uh, my quick views. I mean, first of all, obviously, it goes without saying, um, uh, we are facing a, a great deal of uncertainty. And uh, uh, definitely, we will have to put in place a number of contingency plans. I mean, uh, donations, uh, sponsorings are likely to be done for years. I mean, not for, for months, but for years. And some business schools are very dependent on that. Uh, I also know that uh, many business schools will decide not to enroll a foreign student this fall. I believe that in the United States, a number of business schools have already decided uh, not to recruit uh, internationally. And obviously, this will have a cost the cost for the business schools and the students as well. Uh, and I mean, regarding uh, simply uh, recruitments, um, uh, yesterday I had a, an ITP board, you know that, uh, the, the, you of course know ITP, it's a group of, of schools and we, we provide uh, the community with training for professors. And uh, we were discussing and many, many top business schools have decided to completely freeze uh, staff and faculty recruitment at least for a year, if not two. So this is uh, indeed a, a very shaky uh, uh, situation. I mean, regarding mobility, of course, the question mark is when are we going to be deconfined or when the quarantine will end? And uh, obviously, 
there will be huge differences. I saw a research done by BCG, the Boston Consulting Group, and some countries are in an, in an alarming situation. I mean, uh, I think Asia and Europe will be more or less okay, but if you look at America, America and North and South, Africa and India, I mean, we've, I think we can have big worries, uh, of course, first of all, for the population and second of all, for um, our uh, profession. Um, talking about uh, the, 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 the ecosystem of business schools themselves, I think there will be, of course, very different uh, uh, impacts depending uh, on uh, the category. I mean, for those relying a lot on executive education, it's going to be catastrophic. Um, I can tell you I discussed with some deans uh, who, are, uh, who are thinking that they will make a seven-digit loss this year. Seven-digit, not six-digit, seven-digit loss. Uh, for those relying more on classic sort of students, uh, the impact will certainly be uh, lower. But of course, I mean, uh, uh, this will affect uh, uh, all, all of us. Uh, agi I mentioned agility and versatility. I mean, I think, I mean, above everything, we should, we should remain calm, we should communicate, and we should, co we should continue to cooperate and collaborate with each other to be able to uh, overcome the crisis uh, together. I mean, this is not competition that matters today, it's more collaboration. Uh, very quickly on, the, on impact assessment, I mean, I of course think it will become more and more uh, critical and take more and more importance. Uh, we will need to deserve even more than before the trust that societies place on us, put on us. I mean, in terms of, as I mentioned, professional development of students and staff, employability, and contribution to the management of organizations at large. This is our raison d'être, and we have to keep that in mind. Thank you. Thank you, Eric, for this uh, first answer. Uh, can, you, can you, Maurice, uh, react to this uh, first question now, please? Yes, thanks, Michel, and thanks to the to the to the dream team you know thanks for organizing you know this very very odd and new way of uh, of interacting uh, so uh, ju ju just a few comments of course i concur i mean to everything i mean eric just mentioned because it's very very true that this kind of a crisis is a kind of a pebble you know that uh, that no school you know had really predicted and I would say no faculty within these schools had predicted in their business cases. Uh, what strikes me also is the fact, you know, that schools, I mean, the ones I'm very, very close to in France, I mean, they have demonstrated an impressive ability to uh, adapt, to reshuffle totally their operations and to adjust them to the, to the crisis. I think in terms of uh, evolution of teaching, for example, the, the, the pace of the change has been, I mean, so rapid, you know, I mean, more rapid than it could have been imagined, you know, for all our uh, digital, uh, I mean, uh, you, you see our digital offices within the schools. Uh, and uh, I'm very, very, very uh, impressed also by the level of attention that has been uh, the, uh, uh, that has been on the uh, on the students themselves, you know, on maintaining the continuity for the existing students. The fact that they can just go on the uh, studies and get graduate. I'm impressed by the fact that uh, you know that FNEJ is providing services to the schools in France, for example, for recruiting the, the students, and we have been able to find new solutions, you know, which we had not done before. So, so everything has been done very, very quickly. And I would say within the community of the, of the schools, you know, where there is this high level of competition within the schools, well, it has been done with a good sense, with a relative good sense, you know, of cooperation. I'm impressed also by the fact, you know, that the staff, the faculty and the students within the schools have demonstrated a high level of, a, of commitment. Let's not forget, you know, the very, very, simple side of the story. For example, all these students that are isolated, who have experienced in France, you know, a very, very sad case, you know, at the beginning of the week, you know, one student, you know, who could not, 
who could not tolerate, you know, this confinement, this lockdown of everything. And uh, I think that the psychological support from the schools is there. And uh, that's an important one. Then the after COVID-19 situation for, for business school, I would say, I don't know, I cannot, you know, I'm a professor, so I cannot predict the future. Only afterwards I can do that. But uh, I think that we'll have three kinds of strategies as usual. We'll have the school that will try to find the solution uh, within themselves, you know, by generating the bright new ideas. And we always have very, very bright new ideas in these times of a crisis. Then we'll have the, the Me Too strategy that is trying to copy what the, the schools, uh, the other schools are doing. And I would say that probably one of the strategies that will be the more rewarding will be to reinforce the connections with the stakeholders, to go back to the stakeholders in order to evaluate the impact of what the school has been doing during the, cr the, the crisis, and of course of the impact you know, that the school may have in the future in this new situation that is a new situation for the schools, but that is a new situation for the stakeholders also. And once again, you know, our impact, the, the, this approach of impact will help this process of reinforcing the connection. And it's probably the, the critical help you know, that we will provide in these very, very terrible times. Thank you. Thank you, Maurice. Uh, Eric, Eric, do you think that uh, impact assessment will be more important in the future because of the crisis? Mute. Come back, mute, Eric, please. Yeah, hello, yeah, yeah, I, I'm here. I mean, impact assessment uh, obviously will become more and more important. Uh, I think it's the, the next slide, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's the next slide. Well, okay. let, let me first, if I, if I may interrupt for two seconds, ask participants to not wait until the end, but already throw in your questions through the Q&A button and I will make sure uh, that we, uh, we treat them uh, in the course of the webinar. So don't hesitate to start using the Q&A, please. Yeah, I think that, that's, that's the one you, you wanted me to answer, Michel. Yes, but it, it was a, a more general question before before ah. uh, before this question. Uh, I just react on what uh, what Maurice uh, said. Yeah. No, there is no for me. There is absolutely no doubt that I mean even before I mean the impact uh, uh, assessment was very crucial and critical. But even more now, and uh, again uh, um, after the crisis of two thousand and eight, and even before. Uh, many uh, uh, institutions have lost a great deal of legitimacy and uh, uh, we can put ourselves in this basket and again I mean if we want to regain confidence trust and legitimacy in society uh, uh, we have to demonstrate the positive impacts that we have on stakeholders and on societies at large there is no doubt about it and this is what I will try to develop a bit during the, the, the second question Okay, so uh, my, my second question is uh, first, I think, to, to Maurice Grid, that, that's right. Uh, what, what is, Maurice, please, uh, can you come back with us? Uh, what is, please, uh, oh, sorry. Maurice, what is the role of impact or the place of impact in the, in the strategy of business school? Uh, I just put just three quick ideas you know, on this slide. You see, what is strategy is, uh, about? Strategy is about the present preparing for the future. And uh, clearly, in fact, you know, is about what uh, a business school deliver to the external world. That is the very raison d'etre, you know, to come back to a word Eric was mentioning earlier. What is the raison d'etre of the institution? It is what it is supposed to provide, to deliver to the external world. I mean, we no longer exist if we no longer provide anything that is, <laughs> that is worthwhile, you know, to the external world. What impact is doing, it is helping us just to assess, you know, and obviously later on to reinforce, you know, what we can provide and what the external world can be expecting from us. Strategy is also about how to relate with the external world. And of course, impact 
helps us decipher all the constituencies you know that we provide something to of course we have our traditional stakeholders whom we all know because they are part of our governance because we meet them every day but sometimes you know doing the impact survey we, re we realize that there are some constituencies that we had not thought about and uh, assessing that is helping you know the process of revamping refurbishing a bit you know our strategy and then you know eventually strategy is about how to bring together people within the organization in order to achieve you know a common mission and for me you know uh the experience i have you know uh, from this uh, from this process is the fact you know that uh, assessing the impact reflecting upon the impact interacting within the school about the impact you know it is a way of reinforcing a common vision of the people inside and of course that is a major strategic resource you know and uh, even though maybe it was not the, uh, the, the the first target you know when we started with this process of impact we realized that this internal output of the process is very strategic i mean for the school uh, th thank you maurice you're, you're absolutely right you, you know um uh, before answering uh, to to eric to comment that that question uh, as you know we 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 just organized on uh, on monday or tuesday uh, a bsis online visit uh, uh, at kominsky university and so it means that we didn't move to Kaminsky, to Warsaw, of course, and we, we did it uh, all on, online. And uh, the, it works very well, and we demonstrate that it is possible. And uh, we have been very surprised, very impressed, that all what the school is doing during the crisis, uh, for the students, uh, for high school, uh, for the faculty in connecting people, so it means also that, of course, the crisis is very sad, but it's also an opportunity for the school to do things, to create impact, and to communicate on its impact during the crisis. Eric, uh, can, you, can you come back and uh, answer that question? But uh, Yes, yes. I mean, uh, of course, I, I agree fully with what uh, uh, Maurice was, was saying. Uh, what I think is that clearly a business school must have more than ever uh, the obsession of serving society. And uh, uh, we must produce, I mean, an academic institution produces and disseminate knowledge. But this knowledge must, again, must be heuristic, useful for societies and stakeholders. This is very crucial. I mean, to give the right mindset to students. Uh, to participants, uh, making sure that, that stakeholders are, have also a positive uh, feedback. And, and, and sorry, I mean, the elephant in the room is research. I mean, this crisis will question even more the DROI uh, of research. I mean, some research are far too disconnected from the needs of society. We invest sometimes fortunes. I think this is the economist that assess that certain papers in a journals can cost up to 300,000 euros each. 300,000 euros, you can do quite a little bit of, uh, of stuff with it. Huh? And those papers can have sometimes very doubtful, heuristic and practical finding. I think we have to stop talking to ourselves. This is one of our big defaults, one of our big uh, disadvantages we must prioritize research that contributes to responsible management of organizations. And if we don't do that, we will continue to lose our legitimacy and society will take us, will, will uh, hold us responsible uh, for it. We have an important role to play, but we must align our strategies with uh, the objectives of society. Uh, that, that, that's right, Eric, but uh... Uh, as, you, as you know, uh, when, when we talk about the impact of research, very often we distinguish uh, the academic impact of research and uh, the managerial and societal impact of research. And, and we know that very, very often uh, 
uh, we more consider the academic impact than uh, the managerial and societal impact. Uh, so how do you think that we can manage in, in, uh, in the future a better balance between academic impact of research and managerial and societal impact of research? What will be the incentive? I, 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 have, I have, in a way, a, a terminology issue or a taxonomy issue. I mean, academic impact, I mean, if it's that you publish in my review and, and I publish in yours, and we are very happy to have a very high ranking, I'm sorry, it doesn't count. It's not even that it doesn't count, it's unfair. It's unfair to society, it's unfair to people who believe in what we are doing. I'm not against a, a very academic research, but sometimes, somewhere, it must have a, a concrete application and, and a heuristic dimension. Otherwise, again, it's talking to each other. And, and, and I think society will definitely go after us if we don't uh, uh, contribute more. Uh, to uh, its, uh, its, its endeavors and its, uh, its objectives. So, uh, you know, a lot of research, I mean, very academic research that you're talking abo about is hypothetical, deductive, and axiomatic, and based on von Humboldt. Von Humboldt was 1804. I believe there are plenty of new dimensions in research and methodologies that have appeared more recently. Uh, and I think we have, we have, I mean, Research, you see, talking about the situation of the coronavirus today, I mean, research should, should take that into consideration now, just like uh, doctors, medical doctors are doing. And for management, this is exactly the same. Research is very often, uh, let's say, a very cold dish that has been prepared over three or four years and that has lost relevance, even in terms of time frame. I think we have to reinvent ourselves. Again, what matters is to have a very broad acceptation of the concept of research. The moment we are too monolithic, we are dead because we will die from anthropia. Merci. Thank you, Eric. Uh, Maurice, can you, can you give uh, your, your point of view on, on that balance between uh, academic research and uh, uh, academic impact, excuse me, and managerial and societal impact of research, please? Well, uh, what I we we all know we all know you know the counterproductive effects you know that we have in the current way of considering uh, of considering research, and uh, I mean my opinion and I would say what we are doing at SNEJ is the idea that uh, well we are too little we are too small we are too weak uh, you know to change this situation, but. If we can do something, it is by giving value, by acknowledging, you know, by, uh, you know, by uh, giving visibility to all the rest of the research that has more societal and social impact. So the only way of doing it, you know, it is not to, uh, it, it is just to have systems, you see, that allow our colleagues, you know, in the faculty, to give value, to recognize some value and acknowledgement when they do this kind of, re of research. And of course, the, the impact, the assessment of impact, it is a wonderful way of doing that. Why? Just because this kind of research, most of the time, as Eric said, is beyond the, the traditional categories. We need a kind of a system that can give visibility to what is done in many, many schools. Uh, you see, we say that the research is too academic, but when we look at the schools, what is being done at the schools, most of the time, very, very discreetly, because there is no visibility, I would say that schools are, are doing, you know, are sheltering much more uh, managerial and social research than we usually think the problem is that they have no visibility. The problem is that there is no incentive, you know, for, for the faculty just to give visibility to this research. And in that sense, you know, the, the impact approach is a way of, I would say, putting a kind of counterweight, you know, to the traditional academic research. Okay, I, I see, yes, I see the answer of uh, the professor of human resource management and the answer is create incentive and you yes. will have the result. Eric. 
Very quick reaction. I, I concur a thousand percent with what Maurice has just said. The point is, Maurice says, I mean, the, the, the FNEJ is too small. But unfortunately, EFMB is too small as well. ACSB is too small as well. We all have the same opinion. And the system is self-entertained, self just like a chemical reaction. And it continues to go on like that. I mean, promotion, tenure, and things like that are given because you have published in such and such review. Um, uh, I know FNEJ is also uh, uh, has a, a book competition, a book award, EFMD has a case competition. We try to do our best. We try to adapt our accreditation standard to that. But we must push the profession to change. I mean, and uh, I believe it will start in doctoral programs. We have to modify the structure of doctoral programs. And from the very beginning, uh, give this sort of uh, incentive to young faculty members to, to do different research. I'm not saying they shouldn't do academic research, but they should be able also to do different research and, and then change the system of uh, appraisal within business schools. And, and hopefully, perhaps, uh, government subsidizing uh, uh, schools or companies will also request and require uh, more uh, sort of links uh, with, uh, with reality, with stakeholders and with society. Thank you, Eric. Grit, we have a question? Yes, we have several questions that came in. A, a remark first uh, uh, about the fact that schools and accreditation agencies will have to adapt uh, to this radically changing world in which the priorities of the past are no longer uh, relevant now and the requirements of the stakeholders change. And therefore, a, a question came in, uh, does all of what uh, you said, Eric and Maurice, imply that key areas and indicators within BSIS will, will change or can we maybe use uh, some of what you discuss within the upcoming BSIS assessments? Eric, you would like to comment on this or Maurice? If you want, uh, uh, well, uh, I believe the framework of BSIS, it's a bit like accreditation. I mean, it's a moving target for different reasons, but uh, uh, you remember when we created Equis, uh, the model was extremely qualitative, not very formalized, and step by step, thanks to the interaction with the profession, thanks to the number of peer reviews, thanks to uh, the, 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 the Equis committee, the Equis accreditation board, we refined our models, and as you know, the model evolves every year. I think for BSIS, it's very true, and it's even more true, because the dimensions are even <laughs> larger and broader, uh, and uh, we learn while walking. And I think a very, very critical element in there is the fact that we need as much input as possible from the BSIS uh, schools, the ones that have been through, I think we should try to have a, a, even a more systematic system uh, 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 to, to have a permanent sort of contact with them so that we can continue to move forward and, and refine what we are doing and, and be even more relevant, more pertinent in the current context and for the future. Yes, uh, if I, I may just uh, uh, say one thing about the, the, the question. Well, you see, a, I would say uh, the BSIS approach, just as it is at the moment, is pretty, pretty open, you know, and that allows for every school when they are doing their self report, I mean, to put many, many things, I mean, to have many, many inputs, you know, within the frame of the existing criteria. Then, uh, you see, I think that uh, BSIS is a system, you know, as it stands for, and uh, I would say that we need to have some stability. And this stability is not a problem, given the fact, you know, and maybe that's the next question, you know, that uh, what is done, you know, by, by, by the experts with the team in the school, it is a way, you know, of uh, starting from the self-report to customize, you know, and to broaden, you know, the scope of the approach. 
So I think that the BSIS approach is not the self-report and the, the indicators. It is more than that. It is the self-report with the existing uh, indicators. When we need some stability just to make comparisons, you know, over time. But then, you know, it is the complementary uh, uh, help and the complementary benefit of what we do uh, during the visit. Thank, thank you both of you. Sorry, Michel, to interrupt. I have a, another question about um, uh, the question of uh, research that we just discussed. And that is, as a research director, uh, could you, could you, you know, could you give advice to a research director about the language they can use to speak to faculty about these issues of uh, research? Eric, uh, Morris? Mm. Well, I mean, it's, it's of course a, a, a very difficult issue. I mean, uh, I, I was saying it's the elephant in the room because everybody talks about it, but nobody wants to push the elephant out of the room. Uh, and, and to tell you the truth, I don't know by which bit you have to take the elephant uh, because uh, uh, it seems that every single attempt to change the system simply doesn't work. Uh, I think that uh, uh, eventually, uh, I think rankings can certainly help us also uh, change the deal. Uh, and, and well, I mean, it's, it's very surprising to, let's say, to see that extremely clever people are converging and are, are, are let's say, uh, 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 injecting all their intelligence and their energy on one single form of research, whereas the world is becoming more diverse, more complex, and richer in a certain, more dangerous also by certain means, but, but richer. I mean, if, if the environment becomes more complex, our answer to this environment should also be more complex. I mean, it goes without saying, so how can we concentrate on one single type of methodology and one single type, type of research to answer the needs of society and stakeholders? I think it's a mistake. I've always felt it's a mistake, but I've, I've been saying that for 15 years. So <laughs> I feel a bit, uh, a bit dry now. Um, uh, I believe it should come from, from certainly top business schools, but in groups, uh, as you know, uh, if one does it, the other ones won't. So you need to have a critical mass of institutions deciding to go uh, another way. And Greg, if, I, if, you, if, you, if I may, I saw another question on my Indeed. question about danger on relying on, on, relying on, on executive education during exactly. and after the crisis. Exactly. Well, I mean, today uh, it's clear that companies have cut, uh, have cut their cost uh, uh, and, and, and education, executive education in particular, has been one of the first uh, cost-cutting uh, actions. Uh, as I said, I've discussed with several deans of top institutions, and they are very worried uh, uh, about this situation at the very moment. Now you're talking after the crisis. The point is uh, habits uh, and, and behaviors may change, and we know that they will change in several instances. And what will happen with executive education? Of course, uh, those institutions are preparing online products, very uh, elaborated and sophisticated digital ones, but the financial impact on companies may push them to reduce anywhere their budgets and perhaps to turn to alternative sort of providers that will be perhaps less costly, more basic of course, but less costly, simply because, I mean, they are for profit and uh, they are not doing, let's say, the, 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 the research, they don't have all the costs that we have uh, ourselves, and they will, they, will take, they will take advantage of it. I mean, look at LinkedIn, for instance, all the, the, the courses they give online at a very low price. I mean, uh, of course, you can compare that with the executive education of London Business School, or INSEAD, IMD, or, or the, the very top ones, but, I mean, they will continue to work on that. They update everything. So they are around us competitors that may take a share of uh, executive education uh, uh, following the issue that we are currently facing. Thank you. Thank you.
Grid, do we, we go ahead with the, the last question to our two speakers? Okay, uh, we have a, a remark uh, and a question that came in. Yeah. We often speak of impact in terms of outcomes and BSIS assists us in reading those outcomes, much like indicators. How can we best use this tool and the broader discussion around impact in a more upstream way. For example, when we are developing our strategies rather than measuring their performance. That's a very relevant question, of course. Question and we, uh, for Michel. Michel, it's for Michel. <laughs> no, I'm not sure the question is for me, but I begin uh, to answer. That's a very relevant comment, of course. And, and more and more, we have to distinguish the action, the outcome, and the impact of the action. But of course, and also in BSIS, and uh, when we try to talk about impact in business school, very often the answer of uh, the school are around, are about uh, action and outcome. You know, very often when we, when we ask about the impact of uh, entrepreneurship uh, or the impact in terms of entrepreneurship, the answer is, uh, is about the teaching and entrepreneurship. And that's not really uh, what we expect. Of course, it is more difficult to talk and to demonstrate the impact than to talk about the action and to give some figure on the outcome. I think that it is an ongoing process and it's also a learning process. The school, they have to, to learn to move from action to outcome and then to impact. But it's more difficult and it's a question of dashboard, but not only. I think it's also a question of culture of impact inside the school. And, and I think the, the question also implied, Michel, that there is something to, to be done before on a more strategic level. Uh, so not just look at what we do now and what is the impact uh, of, of those, those things, but also uh, build the impact thinking in the strategy already. Yes, you know, uh, very often we, we discover after, after being in uh, 40, 47 business school for BSIS, very often we discover that at the beginning we talk about impact, we talk about indicators, and at the end of the two days during the feedback, we are talking about the strategy, the definition of the strategy of the school, the definition of the mission. So uh, sometimes we, we can think that it is, uh, uh, it is a, a bottom up process. We begin with some indicators and at the end, we are talking about the strategy. We are talking about the mission. We are talking about the impact zone of the school. Thank you, Michel. That's it for the moment. I suggest we go on with the next part of the presentation. And the last question to our, our two speakers. Uh, you have been uh, both expert during a BSIS visit. If I remember well, uh, Maurice, it was in UK, in uh, Bedfordshire, close to London, and Eric, it was uh, close to the sea in, uh, in La Rochelle, if I remember well. What was the most uh, striking, surprising, uh, challenging uh, feedback for you? you? You know very well business school, you know very well accreditation processes, but you, you have been surprised by, by what in, in the process? Eric? Yes, uh, well, I mean, uh, indeed, uh, the, the first element is that the approach is extremely different from accreditation. I mean, accreditation is a peer review, I mean, just like uh, with BSIS, and but this peer review is undertaken in the objective of seeing whether the business school, if you want, has been able to improve at least at the same speed as the pool of accredited ones, you see? So accreditation is a moving target. You have a group of schools, I mean, presenting a certain degree of 
of quality, and then you have to improve at the same speed, at least at the same speed. Uh, BSIS, of course, is very different, and I believe that in what you just said before, Michel, you started to give, to give the answer. It's a more inductive process. This is what I would say. There is a very important uh, inductive dimension, and during which, if you want, teams uh, not only analyze the analyzes the, the analyze the, the, the known impact. I mean, the ones that have been described in their self-assessment, but they also try to stimulate a reflection to discover many other sources of impact that have not been, if you want, revealed. Uh, uh, formalized. And I think this is a very important and rich uh, dimension that BSIS has. Uh, really going with the, uh, rolling your sleeves and discussing with the team and the people from the school and discovering new elements uh, that have very positive uh, impact. So I think it's very important. I mean, challenging, it's very intense. I mean, it's true that uh, uh, you, you work a lot but you don't get tired at one single moment because it's very exciting. Uh, uh, people, everybody is excited in this kind of processes. Uh, the, the, the students, the stakeholders, I mean, the, the, the internal stakeholders, and also the team. Regarding the striking and, and surprising uh, uh, elements, well, I think the, the mobilization of stakeholders is particularly impressive. I mean, uh, when I took part, uh, I found a group of people uh, that were completely uh, devoted emotionally uh, to their task and, 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 and to convey to us uh, the, the, the great thing that the school was doing. And I think it's, uh, it, it is great. Uh, for stakeholders, uh, external ones, I mean, uh, governance, etc., uh, it's an eye-opener also uh, in, in many instances those people had underestimated the great contributions, and I put an S at contribution, uh, the great contributions that the school is, is providing the region, the city, uh, let's say uh, the, the, the entrepreneurship of the region, etc. cetera. Uh, all these elements have been very often uh, underestimated. Uh, uh, so uh, definitely I think those are the key points. And of course, uh, if we manage, how can I say that? If we manage to, to reorient, if, in, if you want, all the forces of the business schools, uh, and we were talking about research, so in particular research, towards more societal issues, I believe that we can regain a great deal of legitimacy. And uh, through this kind of impact uh, uh, assessments and accreditation and quality assessments, establish ourselves as one of the trendsetters in the post-crisis sort of era, post-crisis systems. And I think this is very critical. We have to show ourselves. We have to demonstrate what we are doing. We have to explain the impact we have so that people uh, really uh, uh, understand and support us in the long run. Thank you, Eric. Maurice, what is your feedback? From your experience. Yes, so sorry for my camera. I get the impression that my camera has caught the virus, you know, because it's doing silly things. I would say that being an expert, first of all, for me, it has been a unique experience, you know, and the, the unique experience of partnering with Michel Kalika. And clearly, there will be two times, you know, in my own professional life before partnering with Michel and after. So that is the first thing. Then the second, uh, the second thing, and more seriously, is the fact that uh, uh, being an expert is a team experience. I mean, you are not the expert, you know, uh, and discussing, you know, with the representative of the schools. You are really a, a, a one team, you know, trying to do his best in order to increase, at the end of the day, the impact of higher education in management for the sake of everybody, for the sake of the school, and for the sake of the experts themselves, because we are all the same goal in this uh, in this matter. I would say that the, the spirit is you no know, no sanction, no audit. There is no no risk, you know, of any discredit, no personal interest at stake. 
So that is really the team spirit, trying to do uh, best in order to bring something, I would say, for the school, first of all, and uh, more broadly. Then I would say that is, and that is much more personal, it is a wonderful occasion for experts to discover new schools, new educational models, connections with the, the school and the, the local business, the stakeholders. Personally, I've never been convinced, you know, by uh, what the sociologists of higher education in business say. That is, all business schools are the same. Personally, you know, I've never bought that as an idea. And when you are an expert, you know, on, uh, on the BSI esteem, you realize the diversity of these schools. You know, the, the richness you know, of what is experienced in, uh, in all the schools. And Michelle, with your 46 or 47 schools experience, I mean, you probably concur to that. And that is very, very rewarding, I mean, and, uh, and encouraging to see, you know, this, this variety of approaches, even though we all have the same goal. And I would say maybe the last thing, maybe the most important one, you see, BSIS is a system. And we know the limits of any system. We spoke already about the limits of the indicators. We will never have a definite list of relevant indicators, you know. It will always be limited. And we know that if we have indicators, well, we try, most of us, we try to stick to the indicators rather than for what these indicators are supposed to indicate. So the visit and being an expert help us and help the school to go beyond the indicators. Doesn't mean that the indicators are not important. We need to go through the indicators, but the visit helps to go beyond. And I would say maybe more importantly, most self-report, and of course it cannot be different, you know, it's about the past. And one major trap, you know, of uh, an impact analysis, it's to be trapped, you know, in the, in the current situation, in the very, very short term. By the discussion, you know, it helps the school and the reflection to go beyond the short term, you see, and to envisage a more longer term perspective about these ideas of impact. And to me, you know, that maybe, you know, when I reflect to this experience, when I go through all the, all the self reports uh, and, and the visit reports I can reread, you know, it's probably what strikes me. You know, the self report is about what happened in the, in the past and what happens today. And the visit helps, to, helps us to go beyond that. Thank you, Maurice. Grid, do we have some questions now? Yes, yes, we do. Um, a first question concerns the appropriate timing of uh, BSIS. The question is, is it better to do it before, after, or during an other accreditation process? For example, Equus. It's a question. So, for oh, you or for uh, Eric, maybe? Okay, anyway, you will do it. So you can do it before, you <laughs> yeah. can do it during, or you can do it after. It, it, it depends. You know, the, the purpose of, of, of the two processes are, are different. But of course, it is the same school, it is the same information system, and there are some overlaps between, between the two. As, as Eric can say, we, we organize a pilot between uh, Equisi Pass and BSIS Vilizit, and we demonstrate a, a lot of overlap. So it, it depends on the school, and each case is different. And very often, we discuss with the school when it is really useful to do it. I, to complement, I agree with what Michel has said, of course. Well, I mean, I think you shouldn't be driven by accreditation or BSIS or one or the other. What matters is your strategy and your purpose in going through the exercise, or actually the exercises. I mean, uh, uh, if you have a burning issue to deal with your stakeholders, if you really need at a certain stage to demonstrate your, your, your impact on a given uh, uh, impact zone, 
then do it immediately. I mean, if you think it can complement uh, your Equis accreditation later on uh, to insist more on uh, the contribution to community, the contribution to stakeholders, do it after. Uh, or, I mean, we have had already pilots to do both together. I mean, one of my dreams, uh, but it's still a dream, would be one day to have a sort of, I don't have the, the name, but a sort of EFMD quality improvement journey where, let's say, during the week, we could have a, 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 an institutional accreditation, a program accreditation for those interested, and at the same time, the impact assessment. Meaning, having a sort of holistic approach and doing everything at the same time, and later on making sure that we keep track with everything so that the, the burden on, on self-assessments, etc., would be lighter for the schools, but we would keep much more in contact and we would update our data and our uh, sort of uh, criteria, criteria in a much more uh, uh, permanent way so that we can also favor benchmarking benchmark exercises with other institutions. Of course, this is in a more longer term, but it would make, in my opinion, a lot of sense. Thank you, Eric and Michel. The next question um, concerns uh, what uh, you mentioned before, the fact that the positive impact is often uh, underestimated. So the question is, what are your suggestions to avoid underestimating that positive impact? So that Natalia, uh, I think this is the beauty of the exercise. We all hope you will underestimate many of your positive impacts, otherwise the team will be partly useless. The beauty of it is this interaction between your school and between the team. Uh, uh, because we, we, in a way, it's a sort of dialectical process between the school and the team, uh, a ping pong sort of game, uh, during which uh, 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 we, we learn a lot as, as uh, peer reviewers, if you want, and you learn a lot through the questions that we are asking, uh, the points we are making due to the experience of uh, certain uh, very key auditors like Michel. So I don't think you should try to investigate every single element that would have a positive impact. You should do it in the most possible candid way. And behind that, I mean, after that, uh, you should embark uh, uh, in a very candid way as well uh, with the team so that we work together, we roll our sleeves, and we really optimize uh, the report and, and we discover all these and we reveal all these positive impacts that you definitely have. Michel, you would like to Yes, the, the underestimation of the positive impact is both inside the school and outside the school. Very often after the, the process or during the process, the, the people inside the school, they are really surprised by all the impact that they create uh, without uh, being uh, aware about it. And of course, I don't talk about the stakeholders outside the school. Very often, they have, uh, they have not uh, a real and exact image, a perception of what the business school is doing and about the impact of the business school. Uh, if I may, uh... Yeah, I may agree uh, about underestimation. I'm afraid that BSIS, you know, is just like anything else. What I mean is, well, uh, unless I work out, you know, unless I reflect on what I am doing, you know, I don't really have a clear view about what I'm doing. So it is a process through the through the BSIS. I try to assess a very very most of the time underestimated uh, 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 vision of this of this impact and once i try you know to uh, to to confront it to someone external when i confront it you know to indicators then i have new fresh ideas and it helps me you know to go to go to a, a more actual vision of this impact uh, i'm afraid that it is just like any learning process how do i learn 
I learn by looking at what I'm doing. I try to understand why I'm doing it. I look at the consequences, and the more I look at the consequences, the more potential effects you know, I can discover at the end. So it's very, it's very traditional, you know, as a process in a, in a certain way. That concludes all the questions, Michel. Okay, maybe we can come back to, on, on, a, on a previous question, you know, about uh, the impact of the crisis on BSIS. I think we, we, we will face, uh, we will have two, two impact of, uh, of the crisis on BSIS. The first impact is on the process. Uh, it means that now we can manage a BSIS process from the beginning to the end, totally online. It's, it's an option and it's not uh, mandatory uh, plan B. We can do it as the first plan, which just uh, demonstrated for Kominsky, uh, Kosminski Business School in, in Warsaw. And really, uh, I didn't know the school before and with my colleague, uh, I think uh, we, we, we are able to assess all the impact and to formulate recommendation, even if we didn't visit the school physically. So I think that, that uh, the first consequence is on the process. It means that now the can, a school can, during the crisis, enter the process, and uh, we don't know what will be the future, but anyway, we will be able to, to organize the visit, either face-to-face, -face, either online. That's the first consequence. The second consequence is about, uh, and it was a question, it's about uh, the contents of the criteria. Of course, we have also, uh, and we do it, we have also to consider the impact of a business school during a crisis. And it's a, a very good situation, it's a very good example to highlight the impact of the school in this context. Michel, can I add uh, one last question, maybe? Yeah, you can. Okay, thank you. Um, there is a, a comment uh, that we received that BSIS and impact will always be a nice to have when it comes to selecting elite members of the group of uh, top schools, quality schools. What is your reaction to that? Uh, Eric, <laughs> you want to answer Yeah, you are going to endorse me. <laughs> no, no, but I think it's a, it's, it's, it's a very good point. You know, uh, uh, EFMD, uh, uh, of course, he is happy uh, to represent uh, so-called very top schools. Uh, because in a way they can be role models in helping others improve. Uh, what I think is that when you look at the pool of equi schools, because uh, I guess uh, I, I lost the question because I, there was the name of the lady. I, I remember it was the lady's grid that removed it. It's Anne, maybe? Uh, uh, Cynthia. 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 Yeah. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, Cynthia, we, were to, we talk about equi schools in general. Uh, I think. When you look at the pool of schools, they are extremely different one from another. From another. Uh, if you compare, Michel was mentioning Kozminski University. If you compare Kozminski University with INSEAD, uh, with Queens in Canada, Stellenbosch in South Africa, or Tsinghua in China, uh, you have very different models and very different schools that can inspire uh, high quality sort of uh, 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 measures to be taken by others. But again, uh, BSIS has a different meaning that is uh, equally important. Uh, um, when we, for instance, did the BSIS at Sobi Business School in Canada, in the Nova Scotia uh, province, the impact uh, for the school has been enormous, simply because the school is doing an incredible job locally and regionally. This school doesn't have, let's say, the ambition of becoming uh, one of, of the top three business schools or five business schools in Canada, but they are serving their community so well that they deserve to be recognized, if you want. Uh, now, uh, I think you mentioned 
ranking in the in the question it's, it's a pity that the race not, yes i'm i'm sorry for uh, uh, I, I, I can read it again the race for rankings is a good example uh, okay. of yeah, yeah, the yeah. Rules. thank you Greg. so ranking was mentioned i mean I, I know that the weight of accreditation is very important in rankings and even sometimes it's a condition to enter rankings and uh, how can I say that? I'm sad. I mean, that it's a condition to enter rankings. I mean, I am very happy that it has a weight in rankings because the work that is done through accreditation is very heavy, very serious, and means something. So really, it brings a positive contribution to rankings. But it, should, it shouldn't be a condition to be in or out. And then, the, 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 let's say, the, 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 the pool of criteria for rankings should be much, much uh, broader. So this, this would be my, uh, my answer. I mean, uh, uh, everything is novel. It's like in research. I mean, uh, books, case studies, very academic research, everything has a meaning and everything is novel. Nobody should be left aside. You know, if I can add uh, in terms of conclusion, a uh, word BSIS is not an accreditation and uh, it's, it's not only a nice thing to, to have uh, school uh, are going through BSIS because they think it is useful for them. And a lot of school uh, that have been through BSIS are not uh, accredited, uh, are not uh, first class school or world international school. It could be regional school. But the important issue is, do you want to know more about your impact? Do you want to communicate more to stakeholders, to your stakeholders about your impact? So you are concerned. All of the school are concerned. Great. Thank you, Michel. That's all uh, for the time being. So. Martina. Okay, so um, I would like to thank you everybody and um, I would like to ask you to just stay a few more seconds to answer our short poll. And I think that's everything. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, thank you for coming. Stay safe. And thank you to our speaker. Take care. And keep cool. Yes. <laughs>